Hello and welcome to the Hope Hotspot. My name's Luke and I'm here this afternoon with Shirley Weston, who's our cross-cultural uh, kids uh, and family worker here at Hope Church. Um, she has recently been on a trip to uh, Azerbaijan. Uh, if you don't know where Azerbaijan is, Shirley is going to hopefully clear us in a bit. Uh, but Shirley, first of all, for those who have never heard of Azerbaijan, tell us more about Azerbaijan. Okay, well, people may have heard of Azerbaijan through the Eurovision Song Contest or the Europa Football Final, which took place between Chelsea and Arsenal, which was just actually, as it happens, a few days before I arrived there on my recent visit. Um, I think it's an interesting place culturally, it has many different influences. Um, geographically, it's in between Middle East, Central Asia and Eastern Europe. Um, it's a country that would be largely Muslim, but definitely much more nominal than anything else, but culturally quite Asian. So yeah, very interesting place in many ways. Okay, great. Very interesting. Um, so you went for, for just, just under three weeks uh, in June uh, of this year. Uh, tell us, what, what is your connection to Azerbaijan, Shirley? Why, why would you go out there for, for about three weeks? Uh, what's your history there? Well, why would I go there? But I have a connection with Azerbaijan because I actually lived there for six years between 2007 and 2013. Um, and yeah, so therefore it's a country that's very, very dear to my heart. I see it as my second home in many ways. And I have many wonderful friends there, all of which are local Azerbaijani. And um, for me, um, yeah, it's just a place that, that means a lot and it's a place that I, I like to, to visit as often as I can. Great, just give us a li little bit of history. What were you doing out there for those six years? Okay, so I went out there actually to help at a school, an international school, small one, and um, ended up becoming head teacher of this school within a few weeks of me being there, which was a little bit of a surprise to me and not what I'd expected. Um, it was an amazing time. I was working uh, as a teacher, but also training local teachers there. Um, I, the school got closed down twice while I was there by local authorities. So it was, it was a tough time in many ways. And also I was involved with a local church, a very, very small fellowship, um, supporting the believers, helping to develop a, a children's ministry, would you believe it? <laughs> the thing that I love most. And um, yeah, generally trying to learn the language and culture and just live my life out there really and, um, and be salt and light in, in the particular town in which I lived. Right, very interesting. I'm sure it's very different to, to leading a, a children's ministry in Azerbaijan than it is to, to here in, in, in Luton. Um, but uh, so obviously you've been back there recently for three weeks. And obviously that's, I mean, as you say, you spent six years there. You've got uh, a lot of connections there. Tell us about that trip and why particularly now you decided to go back. OK, so the first time I went back was after four years of leaving. Um, that was two years ago. That was quite a difficult decision for me to go back because I didn't quite know how it was going to be. Um, when I left it was very very emotional and difficult um, but I found straight away I reconnected with people there. Um, my language was never very good in the first place but I could still remember how to speak to some extent and it just felt that God still had a plan and a purpose for me being there in Azerbaijan. Um, so I decided that I would try and go back regularly and it just seemed like a good time to go this summer. Um, yeah, just wanting to reconnect with people, um, particularly wanting to encourage some of the local Christians there. There's a couple that I support who are um, reaching out to people in their own country, um, in, a, in an area where there is no church, and I wanted to spend some time with them. And, and also to see my former colleagues, um, which is always lots of fun. So yeah, that was, those were my reasons really for going back this time. Good. And so uh, you, you've told me a little bit about some of the, the students that you taught when you were there as a, as a teacher. Uh, do you have any stories to share with us from, from this recent visit about any of those students? Yeah, I have to say that probably my highlight was reconnecting with my former students. Um, I met some who were in high school, speaking English really well now, which was great, great to see. Uh, and then some who were at uni. And there's one girl in particular who, who I want to talk about. Um, her name is Fatima. She's uh, very, very dear to my heart. She, um, her mum um, 
took her to an orphanage, to a children's home at a young age because she, uh, she was cast out of her own family. Um, so she was in a very difficult situation. She was found by some of the foreign Christian workers and um, the mum was given a job as a cleaner. And the little girl Fatima started coming to our school for a while. She then went to one of the local schools. They were part of the local fellowship, very much involved in that. Um, and uh, at the time that I was there, the local fellowship got raided by police. Um, and the little girl Fatima was threatened by um, the teachers at her school after this and told that she'll never pass any exams. Um, she'll never make a success of her life if she continued to associate with Christians. Um, it was great to meet up with her, this girl, in, um, in the capital where she's now at university, to hear her story. Um, she's, uh, learning, uh, she's learning English at university and German. She's involved with the local student Christian group there and uh, one of the leaders. And for me, it was just so encouraging how God uh, works in people's lives through the difficulties and um, brings people out the other side in positive ways if they continue to trust in him. And I would say that generally what I see in the local believers there is just incredible strength in, in difficult times. Uh, we don't know what it's like to be a Christian in a really persecuted country. And yet, um, you know, I think these people just, for me, an incredible example of strength and courage. Wow, that's a great great story to hear about uh, Fatima as well and, and how somebody who, who had been told by the police of, of all people, if the police came to my house and told me, I'd be a bit, uh, a bit scared. But, uh, but to hear that she's actually now at university is, is, must be really exciting. Um, tell us, you, you, you talked a little bit about the, the local church, local fellowship. Tell us a little bit about the, the local church uh, that you visited in um, Azerbaijan. Okay, so the local church that I used to be part of is, um, is still going. Um, there's an amazing couple who run it. Um, I spent a wonderful afternoon with them. Um, they don't speak English, so that was quite a challenge for me with my language. Um, but uh, yeah, just wonderful hearing stories about how things are going. Um, there have been constant challenges. People leave um, regularly, uh, go off to other places. Um, but yet, there's always good things that they want to tell me. And they were telling me about the fact that some children have started new families with kids, have started coming recently, and how they're hoping to start a children's ministry again, um, which was something which I, I started when I was there. So, so that was really encouraging. Um, yeah, really good time with them. And who knows, maybe a holiday club in Azerbaijan? Yeah, I would. they would love me to go and do a holiday club in Azerbaijan. So who knows, maybe I'll end up taking the whole holiday club team with me, including Red Kev and the other puppets to Azerbaijan at some point. Well, who knows if we can get Red Kev through passport and control, you know, iffy. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so this is obviously something... Uh, Azerbaijan is something personal to you um, and has been part of your kind of uh, journey over the recent years. Um, but as you now obviously work uh, with us here at Hope Church, this is becoming more of a, a thing that we're hoping to adopt as Hope Church. Is that is that right? Do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I know that Tony is very keen to, to support what I'm doing, which is great. Um, I'm hoping to be able to go back um, maybe once a year. Um, I'd love to be able to take some people with me um, in the future. Um, I think it's a wonderful place to visit. I'd love to introduce some of my friends to, to people from, from the church. And yeah, just really hoping I can continue to, to have a connection there and develop that within the church. Okay, and, and just going back to your recent trip again, now we've, we've talked about the kind of serious bits and, and things. Surely three weeks out there, you must have done some fun stuff as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about anything you did? Um, yeah, whenever I spend time with my former colleagues, it's always just so much fun. We went on some wonderful trips to the mountains. There's always singing on the bus, which is led by our caretaker, who's got an amazing voice. And, um, and then we just played games, had picnics. Um, I think perhaps one of the fun things that we did was playing double. Um, I taught I introduced that to both some of my former students and, and the teachers there, and they really enjoyed that. Um, we had a tug of war, 
Um, we played volleyball and just a really great time. So yeah, they're a really fun bunch to spend time with and, and that was great for me. Fantastic. And, and for those of you listening that don't know what Dobble is, it's a very exciting game uh, with cards and symbols that uh, you should, uh, should find, fi find Shirley and, um, and, and me even, and we'll, we'll teach you Dobble. I'd also like to say that Felipe, who some of you will remember from his time here, was also introduced to Dobble here and has now introduced it apparently to many people across Brazil. So there you go. We are uh, fully endorsing Dobble, <laughs> probably breaking some kind of marketing law here, but uh, Dobble is a great game. If you don't know what it is, come and ask me or Shirley and we'll, we'll be happy to teach you how to play Dobble. Uh, but thank you for, for talking to us about Azerbaijan, Shirley, um, and we look forward to, to hearing uh, more about it as it develops.